You're welcome, Bridget. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, once he's, uh, he's up and moving around and, and on the mend, he's going to have some rehab. So he's going to need some prayer as well on that. So don't quit. Stick with it. Amen. Stick with it. This is our family. This is what church family is all about. It really is. This is what it's all about. It's pulling together. When one of us is hurting, it's pulling together and helping in times of need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, today we're going to continue teaching on tools for healthy living. Or oh, I'm stuck on the last slide, aren't I? Let's, uh, let's uh, eliminate and go to the first slide. Here, I can, do, I can do this. Is that... I'm not coming through on my clicker. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about eyesight today. How many of you uh, kind of take eyesight for granted until something's going on with your eyeballs? Is that true? We, we sit there and we're like, uh, you know, we get up in the, of course, the, those of us are contacts. We, uh, we might think about them a little bit more because as soon as we wake up, we're like, where's my eyes? I need my eyes so I can see. But for the most part, we go out throughout the day without thinking about eyesight. Is that true? What would you do without eyesight? It'd be, it'd be hard. Be scary. Dwayne said dark. Or two. One. Or two. And usually it's after they just smoked a cigarette. One. Or two. <laughs> a. Or B. And then you say A. C. Or D. I can't tell. C or D look the same. A or B. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 through 20. This is out of the Passion Translation. It says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes. Illuminate the eyes of your. What's that word? Imagination. For those of you that know Spongebob, he's my best friend. Somebody at one time bought me a, a, a Spongebob, uh, like a stuffed animal. He was my best friend. I could talk to him. He never argued. He'd have made a great TBI director. <laughs> <laughs> he will illuminate the eyes of your imagination flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation until you experience full revelation of the hope of his calling that is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us his holy ones I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. What are we supposed to do with that power? What does it say? You're supposed to experience it. How many of you are experiencing God's power right now? I am, Pastor. Okay, what are you experiencing? What is, what is that one word there? That, that, uh, is that an adjective? Is that the word I'm looking for? An adverb? Immeasurable, immeasurable, what does immeasurable mean? Can't measure, 
the greatness of God's power. That doesn't mean, oh, wow, God's power is so great, it's so beautiful. That means God's power is... That means God's power is great. It's huge. It's powerful. How many of you are experiencing that? Continually experiencing that. Continue. Do we have some room to... Experience a little bit more. That's why we should never be satisfied with where we are. You can be content, but not satisfied. Does that make sense? You can be happy with where you are. I'm so happy. I'm where I am today than where I was a year ago. Than where I was 10 years ago. Than where I was 20 years ago. I'm so happy. I'm where I am, but I'm not satisfied because I want more, more of God's power, more of his grace, more of his love. I want to experience God in all of his fullness. Where's my cricket? <laughs> Here's some four, here's four facts about the imagination. Back here in verse um, 18, it says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Did you know God gave us an imagination? It's a gift. Your imagination is a gift from God. It's what God gave Adam of course, we know what happened with Adam. He, choos he chose poorly. He made a wrong choice. And because of his wrong choice, his imagination became perverted, twisted. Did you know the word pervert means just to twist? means to twist from the truth. And, he, uh, and so, yeah, some bad things happened. But God has given us an imagination. And that imagination really is eyesight that is greater than our natural eyesight. Do you know there's one more there's more than one kind of eyesight? You got physical eyesight, but you also have an imagination. Is that true? I'll, I'll prove it to you in just a minute. All right, here's four facts about imagination. Number one, everyone has a vivid one. Say vivid. What does vivid mean? Colorful, clear, what'd you say? Real. Can your imagination actually make you feel like it's real? How many of you have ever had a bad dream at night? And you swear it was real. Remember waking up from that and you were sweating? Your heart's going dun 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 dun. And you're, you're beating your husband. <laughs> wake me up. <laughs> or wake up. Is that true? Do you know that's your imagination working in you? Everybody has a vivid imagination. We all continuous, continuously use our imagination even at night. Did you know you use your imagination all day long and all night long? I used this one time before. I was like, you know, uh, here we have Dwayne. Dwayne's uh, one of our leading city managers working. He's got a lot of men under him. And he gets a lot of memos on his desk. Is that true? Lots of phone calls. You ever get phone calls from customers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, on a percentage-wise, how many of them are good calls and how many of them are not so good calls? They only call me if they have something they want to talk about. 
<laughs> he only they only gets bad calls. <laughs> <laughs> so Dwayne's sitting there and he knows what the phone is all about and the phone is ringing what do you think his imagination says Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're what if your boss okay Freddie's Freddie on Freddie's job he's working in quality control He's sitting there behind the desk, he's doing all this stuff on the computer, and the boss comes in and said, Freddie, I need you to go out on the floor and get me such and such a part. First of all, Freddie's sitting in an air-conditioned office. Is that true? And the floor is not air-conditioned. So what do you think is the first thing that goes through his mind? <laughs> <laughs> did you know that he can actually see himself go out right where that part is he knows exactly where that part is where he can find it or is supposed to be and he can actually see himself go get that part and bring it because he knows exactly where it is did you know that's your imagination working because in your mind's eye, you've already done the job. Because you see yourself, go get it, bring it, bring it back. You walk out into that heat, it's like a blast furnace. <laughs> you can't wait to get back in and go. <sighs> True? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me prove to you that you can use your imagination and that you use it all day long. I, I pulled this out in first service. This is, this is Pastor's box of mind games. I'm going to play some games on your mind right now. Using your... You ready for this? Okay. Oh, who put that in there? <laughs> I can taste those already. <laughs> those aren't going back in the box. <laughs> All right. Who knows what these are? Can you see those? Gene, would you turn that bank of lights on right there? That's on entry two. Entry two is the name of the thing. <laughs> Jailhouse bread. <laughs> Can you see those? How many of you have ever had these? I always think of the time when Bobby told the story of Dakota. How many of you remember Dakota? And he was going to make ramen noodles, so he just he put the, put, took the bowl and put the noodles in the bowl, put them in the microwave, and started microwaving them. He just didn't put any water. <laughs> Pretty soon he had a big fire coming out of there. <laughs> How many of you can... Let's, let's use our imagination now. Let's use our imagination. How many of you can smell what burn noodles... <laughs> <are like. laughs> For weeks out of the microwave, pop some corn, tastes like burned noodles. <laughs> I like these. They have a, the spicy packet you put in there. Ooh, I like them spicy. Say spicy. Uh, let's use this one next. A lot of people do this. Anybody in here do this? <laughs> How many of you know? <laughs> How many of you know what this smells like? Throw up. <laughs> How many of you can actually How many of you can actually hear it open? How many of you know what it tastes like? We can all we can all imagine what it tastes like, because probably all of us in here, at least most of us, have tasted one. And you go, how many of you like uh, crushed vitamins dissolved in water? <laughs> That's sugar. How about this? 
Okay, everybody, close your eyes. Take a big whiff. Can you smell popcorn? I actually can smell it. And sister's pop. Oh, well, that's why I can smell it. <laughs> and I thought it was my imagination. <laughs> How many of you like this when you go, except the big bucket, when you go to a movie? Isn't that almost the best part of going to a movie? Have a big, you know, have a big giant cup of Coke. You know, the kind you paid 50 bucks for. <laughs> 35 bucks for the bucket of popcorn. $12 for a bag of M&Ms. <laughs> oh, I love popcorn. Mm. All right, how about this one? Hot chocolate. Let's use our imagination again, all right? Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. It's cold outside. Some snow falling. That's imagination in East Texas, but we can really it. <laughs> There's a few snowflakes falling outside. The fire is crackling. The fireplace. Crack, crack, pop, pop, pop. Hot chocolate in your hand. Can you smell it? Marshmallows floating around in the top. A nice book and a blankie. Or a movie that your husband sleeps through. Mmm. <laughs> can, you, can you taste that? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I want to open it. How about this? I bet I bet we can all taste this. Mm. How many of you like how many of you like ketchup on your french fries? How about mustard? I like mustard on my french fries, but uh, yeah. How about a nice corn dog with... Mm. How about the movie where they're doing this? <laughs> Does anybody know which one that is? Smart and smarter. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. It's my favorite movie of all time. Reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> Moving right along. How many of you just rem remembered what it was like to have some of those things? Might have been last night. Might have been when you were a little child. Ramen noodles might have been for breakfast. <laughs> You see how powerful your imagination is? There's an all-out attack on man's imagination. Religion attacks your imagination. You know why? Religion actually trains you to not use it. Let me give you an example. Can anybody in here actually begin to imagine what it would be like to have so much money That when a big bill comes, you don't even think about it. Can you imagine that? Having so much money that a, a medical bill, a big medical bill that comes, you don't think twice about it? Do you know that there are plenty and plenty and plenty of people in this country that have so much money they don't even have health insurance because they have so much money. So what? They get a hundred million dollar medical bill. What's a hundred million dollars when you have several billion? Can you imagine that? Honestly, I can't.
you know religion tells us that it's not right to have money? Can you believe that? Religion will tell us it's evil to have money. Except the problem is, they're all working their life to the bone to get money. Did you know that the Bible teaches you that it's God's will for you to be financially blessed? Think about that. Religion also teaches imagination. This, this was really big in the 80s and, and 90s that it was of um, the New Age. The New Age movement, it was very cultish. It was demonic to use your imagination. The problem is everybody uses their imagination all day long whether you preach against it or not. It's of the devil to use your imagination. And when he says of the devil, everybody's picturing in their mind what the devil looks like. Some people are picturing it's the person saying, it's of the devil. It's true. Here's another attack. Hopelessness. Did you know hopelessness attacks your imagination? It steals from you. It, it eliminates your ability to think and plan and hope and dream. Who in here has a dream of a big, beautiful home? Does anybody have a dream? Well, that's really selfish, Pastor. Yeah, but you're still dreaming about it. Did you know God doesn't have a problem with you having a big, beautiful home? He's, he said he's building you a mansion in heaven. Yeah, Pastor, that's, that's in heaven when I can handle it. Well, learn to handle it here and he'll get it to you. It's true. Entertainment. Entertainment steals from your imagination. You know why so many people struggle with attention, attention deficit disorder? They're distracted from everything because when you, you're entertained by a movie, video games, how quickly does that thing move from scene to scene? And it's hard to focus when you've been giving yourself that all the time, a steady diet of it. I'm not saying that going to the movies is evil. It's not. It depends on what movie you're watching, of course, but I'm not saying video games are evil. Say, video games, video games. are not evil, depending on what they are. It's all right to play video games. I told you last Sunday my favorite one was Donkey Kong. I had to quit after that because I couldn't, I couldn't handle moving my thumbs fast enough and my brain working. Let me, let me read to you out of the medical news today about disorders that come from video games. It says, because chronic stress effectively short circuits. It said the video games played on a continual basis creates chronic stress in a child or a person's life. It says it short circuits the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the front part of the brain. It says a hyper aroused and mentally depleted child will have trouble paying attention, managing emotions, suppressing impulses, following directions, tolerating frustration, accessing creativity and compassion, and executing tasks. This is a study. Uh, actually, I saw on there it was 121 different studies that they did on uh, children, small children up through teenage and even into the 20-year-olds of what happens when they have a continual diet of video games. And it said the frontal lobe plays a key role in future planning. Say future. future. Including self-management and decision-making. 
People with frontal lobe damage often struggle with gathering information, remembering previous experiences, and making decisions based on this input. And we're talking about frontal lobe damage caused by playing video games. And the reason why it does is it says the excitement and all that takes place in the video game, it releases chemicals, endorphins, dopamine, all of these different chemicals into the brain. It said it actually bathes the brain, the frontal lobe especially, in these chemicals, in these hormones. And it said it literally causes kids problems. They can't relate. They can't handle stress. They're frustrated. They can't make decisions. They can't, they don't, they can't really think about their future because all they can think about is the video game. And it had, several, it had several illustrations on their uh, actual stories of different kids and some of the things that they were experiencing. And I'm telling you that that is nothing more than the devil's attack on our youth's imagination. How many of you in your childhood had to get out and make believe you had certain toys or certain... I can remember as a little kid, I always wanted, I wanted, you know, the big heavy construction things like the front end loaders and the graders and the dump trucks and stuff. And I can remember having a grader made out of just a single two before. And it was my grader and I was making roads and I was going down going with a with a two before. But you know, in my mind, I could see that grater. I could hear its engine. How many of you can hear Gary's Harley right now? How many of you know what a Harley sounds like? Don't you like that sound? It's a, it's a unique one. <laughs> imagination the imagination is vital in long term planning say long term. long term how many of you remember in high school going to career day what they have in career day didn't they have all the military there for the most part especially the army the marines Call different colleges you might want to go to Different careers you might choose, yep, vocations you might want to choose. I remember being eight, nine years old thinking, I want to be a policeman. Why? Because I saw them on TV and they had big guns. And they made a lot of noise. Boom! Boy, I like the sound of that. Can you imagine a boy liking loud noises? <laughs> Gary's, he's not a boy, but he has a loud... I don't know. Is he a boy, Rachel? Yeah. He's got a loud motorcycle. All of us guys are like, oh, and most of the girls are like, it's too loud. <laughs> it's stinky. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Imagination. Imagination is used in long-term planning. Did you know that it's important for you to dream of your future. You need a dream. Did you know a lot of people, they will take a dead end job because it pays the bills and they stay with it so long they lose their dream. And when you lose your dream, you lose, you lose your purpose in life and it steals from you. You know what the number one cause of death in a person is after retirement? No purpose. I, w I have seen it so many times. Say, so many. I have seen people reach retirement age and a year later, two years later, pass away. They were perfectly healthy when they retired. 
and they passed away. Why? Because they just sat down and watched TV. Can you say TV is not always good? Imagination causes you to dream. Say dream. Dream a little. It's important to dream. Are you hearing me, Mama? I know it looks like all I am is milk bottles and wah! Dream. Don't give up on your dream. Don't ever give up on your dream. Bridget, don't ever give up on your dream. Don't ever give up on it. Are you hearing me? Your dream is what gives you focus. You know what else is a, a real thief of your dream? Alcoholism. Drug addiction. Any addiction, really. It steals from your future. It steals your dream. God wants you to dream. He put that dreamer on the inside of you. Is that true, James? Remember laying in on that bed? The doctor said, you're going to be on dialysis, and then that's going to be it. Boop, you're out of here. And you had a dream. You had a dream in your heart. Do you remember what you told me that dream was? What was it? You're not going to be tied to a dialysis machine. The Lord was healing you. Mm -hmm. He would tell me over and over again, I can see myself sitting on that porch swing. Hearing the birds chirp. Smelling the fresh air. Can you remember that, James? You remember smelling that air? You were laying in bed and you could hear those birds. Yeah, you could heal this. You know, have your BB gun out there or 22. <laughs> it's important to never give up. Disease can steal your imagination. It's never, never, never wise to quit your dreaming. And so, as your pastor here this morning, it is my responsibility to remind you. Say remind. remind. Remind you that God gave you an imagination so that you could dream. Let me show you a scripture here. Genesis 11:6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they, have all one, they all have one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be strained from them which they have imagined to do. This is in the building of the Tower of Babel. And it said they all came together, one mind, one heart, one purpose. And they began to build this massive monstrosity. And the Lord said there's nothing impossible to them because of their Another translation amplified, and now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Imagination. Do you see that? Imagination. Another one says, NIV, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Did you know that when you're planning, you use your imagination? That's why dreaming is important. How many of you have ever um, dreamed about a house and you can actually see the furniture in that house? Mm. God's word translation now nothing they plan to do will be too difficult for them why they, planning takes your imagination and I am here to tell you that there is an attack on man's imagination and God wants you to get a hold of it with the word of God 
Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What's in your mind? Your imagination is in your mind. God wants you to take that imagination that he gave you and begin to use it for him. Imagine yourself this way. Imagine yourself with so much finances, not only are your needs met, but you can help whoever you want to help. You can bless them with a car, a new car every year if you want. You can bless them with a new home, pay their electric bill. You can supply them with groceries. Doesn't that ever play on your heart? Haven't you ever seen people in, in deep need and you wanted to just do it all for them? I'll help you. I'll pay it all. There's nothing wrong with that dream. And God can get it to you if you will do it His way. If all you're thinking about, Lord, build me a cabin. Along the river in the Rocky Mountains. Just me and myself there forever. With my fishing pole. That ain't a God dream, I'm sorry. As nice as it sounds, that ain't a God dream. Because God always, always has other people involved in your dream. Are you hearing me? God always has other people in your dream. It's never about me, myself, and I. Leave me alone. God has a dream for you. And it always involves other people. Yeah, Pastor, I'm thinking of me and, and little Johnny and little Susie and little... It's a lot bigger than that. That's still about you. God has a dream that reaches others, 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 others. And he wants you to get that in your imagination. Say, imagination. You want to share that? Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to turn, if you would, please, to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 29 11. And y'all, I'm sure you're all familiar with this verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I want to read that right quick out of the uh, Amplified. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Pastor was talking about dreaming about your future. What's your final outcome? Besides the grave. <laughs> That's where we're all going to end up one day. But, or the Lord's going to come. We're just going to bypass that and go straight to heaven. But what's your final outcome? To be a blessing to others? To be in good health? To be able to give? To be able to uh, work a job that, that earns a good pay? It's the pits to have a job that doesn't bring enough money into your house. I'm just telling you, I've worked some of those jobs. And you're like, ugh. It's much better to work a job that has good pay. Much better. And one What's that you your like. What's your expected outcome? I want you to use your imagination here. The thoughts and plans the Lord has for you. It's not just what he's thinking about you. Oh, Bobby, you're a nice guy. <laughs> no, it's true. He has, he has thoughts and plans. <laughs> Thoughts and plans for you. The, God has plans for you. Don't get all uptight and wound up. And, is this God's will? Is this God's will? <laughs> Don't waste your time on, is this God's will? Just begin to dream. What's That's on the, the inside of you? What Absolutely. is on the inside of you? Some people have wanted to be business owners for all of their lives. They, they have a dream to own a business. And that's just in them. Just dream on that. Don't stress over the details. 
But begin to picture yourself in there. God has plans for you. Imagine what those plans look like. What's your expected end? What's your expected end? Some people want to have a house big enough to be able to be using the gift of hospitality. They want to be able to invite people. They want to be a, a good enough housekeeper to invite people over at the drop of a hat. <laughs> I can't do that. I have to prepare. <laughs> There are dreams in your heart. God has plans for you. So I want you to imagine, what does it look like in your final outcome? What is your final outcome? I know there's kids getting ready to go to college, and they've got big dreams. What's that final outcome look like? Lizzie, what's that final outcome look like? That's a good job. It's a good job, and you're using your brain, and you're solving mysteries. And you're doing all kinds of... I know you got it in there. I, it's sparkling out your eyes right now. <laughs> it's sparkling. What's your outcome? Your final outcome. Have hope in that. I know you've got a dream to see Daniel up and about being normal. And just keep that before you. Keep that. That's how you use your yep. imagination. That's just I'll tell beginning. you right now, she could have her imagination go a thousand not good places, right. based on what those doctors are telling her. I mean, she could easily have had him in the ground 48 times in the last two weeks. Easy peasy. That's not where, how her imagination is to be used. We have put, a, how many times have we gotten some bad news in the mail, money-wise, and instantly you're, you're in the poorhouse and you're living out of your car? I'm just telling you, it, I, I know where you are. How are you using your imagination? Take the scripture. And believe what God said and imagine on those things. I go to bed at night and I set my imagine I set my imagination when I go to bed at night. And you probably probably think, man, that's an old person scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack for any good thing. He leads me beside the still waters. And I see myself in a peaceful place. Because the stresses of life can take you to not still waters. You know, sheep won't drink out of running water. It has to be still water. And I see myself in a peaceful place. He leads me to green pastures. You know, green pastures mean there's plenty. And I set my imagination before I go to bed at night. I picture myself in the place that Jesus has provided for me. I could go to bed with church bills on my mind and lack on my mind and pain on my mind and sickness. And you know what I could go to bed with? is the thoughts of you and all of your needs. And all of your issues. There's some big needs in this congregation. Yes, there are. And I could go to bed with a broken heart every night if I looked at that. But I see myself in that place, and many times I picture you. When I speak Psalm 23, he leads Rachel beside the still waters. And if you're on my heart, uh, many times I pray, Lord, that you're taking them to still waters tonight. Ah. <sighs> To a peaceful place. Lord, I thank you that their needs are met. Oh, I Amen. thank you, Father, that they're in the green pastures. Amen. Those without jobs, Lord, I thank you that even though they, they don't have a job right now, they're still in green pastures because yep. you are their shepherd. Yep. And that's how I use my imagination with Amen. the word of God. Amen. And that's how we're to be using it, not allowing it to take us to the scary place. You know, it can take you right down to the, I mean fast and in a hurry your mind can take you to whoa all of a sudden i'm broke busted and disgusted what how did that happen that fast in the lord with all your heart Your own. Use, use this. Use this right. is what you got to use. And, and hopefully today you've gotten an example of how to use your imagination with the Word of God. Picture yourself in it. And I apologize to all of you. While she's thinking, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not like. And she's thinking about you. I'm going, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> It is, it's just not, it's not right. I'm telling you, it's not right. We lay down and I swear within 10 seconds. 
And I'm there <laughs> praying over you. It's okay. <laughs> That's why the Lord put us together, because he knew I needed my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I messed this statement up last service it was this you Dale gave it to me by Helen Keller the only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision now you think about that God's given you a dream and you need to dream that dream glory to God Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings and we will be dismissed. This is also your opportunity uh, if you want to give into the prison outreach that's coming in December. Uh, this is where we take the finances and we, uh, we purchase the items that we take into the prison. Soap, deodorant, shampoo, and we take it as a gift to 650 prisoners. Um, you can't just take in 25 you have to if you bring it you bring enough for everybody and uh, or nothing and we like to go in and we really we don't want to just go in and say oh we're so glad you're here God loves you and never give them anything at all but a nice word you know James says don't come in and say be warm and well fed and then walk off actually do something about it and so we like to go in and we like to be a blessing to them. So if you want to give in that, that's, that's over and above your tithes. You can give in that as well. Every penny of it will go them. It costs us about $1,500 to supply a bar of soap, um, a stick of deodorant, and a bottle of shampoo uh, to, house that, to give to that many. So, Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to give. We praise you, Lord, that you have blessed us so much. Lord, we have money. Lord, oftentimes we just throw away. Lord, we throw it away on McDonald's. We throw it away on Starbucks. And Lord, yeah, it blesses us, but it, that's all it does is it blesses us. But Lord, you've given us enough to bless others. That's your dream. That's when money counts, is when we can use it to help and bless others. Lord, your word says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And Lord, it's blessed to receive. Woo, we like to receive. But you said it's even more blessed to give. And so we thank you, Father, that as we give towards the prison outreach, Lord, that there is, there is great blessing, number one, in just doing it. Number two, in watching these men receive a gift. Lord, it blesses them. And we thank you for it, Lord. We pray your blessing upon the giving, upon the tithe today. You said in your word that you would give back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, would men give into our bosom. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll receive that, ushers. Yes, Gary said, please pray, not about just giving, but pray about going in December. It's usually the first weekend in December that we go. And uh, it, I just tell you, it's very encouraging. If you've never been, this would be a great opportunity for you to go in. Uh, the Clyde Johnston unit is a very low minimum security uh, prison. Most of the guys in there are just one step away from getting out into freedom. So they are on their best behavior, and they love it when we come in and bless them. They really do. Gary goes in with his loud guitar, and woo, they get down with it. They love the worship. They love to enjoy the Lord. So stand to your feet. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, we send this group home today with the blessings of God upon their lives. Thank you, Lord, for helping us in our imagination to tweak it, Lord, to be able to use it the way you gave it to us, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>